Hello, and welcome to Episode 2 of Planet Hyper Studio. I'm Joe from iteachapple.org. As I've said before, anything is possible with Hyper Studio, which is why I'm speaking to you today from inside this active volcano. It's very exciting. Did you do your homework? I asked you to explore some of the tools we learned about last time. I hope you had a chance to do that. Today we will create a short project, or stack as it's sometimes called, this project will be interactive. It'll include graphics, buttons, and sound effects. So before we get started, though, there's a few preliminary things that we need to cover. So let's get going. Today's tip of the day is Creative Commons. Anyone who has posted to YouTube knows that they are serious about the rules regarding copyrights. We as teachers should also respect the rights of content providers. HyperStudio makes that task very easy, as you will see later in today's lesson. Of course, anything you have created on your own, such as photos, videos, songs, and other works of art, you may use in any way you wish. However, if you want to use something which someone else has created, you must respect their right to decide how that work of art can be used. For those of us who wish to use existing photos or other content, an easy way to stay in compliance with the rules is to go to creativecommons.org. Then read how it works and what to look for when searching for content for your students and for yourself. Finally, let's create a HyperStudio stack. Step one, open HyperStudio and create a new stack. Down here, you can uh, create a new stack on the home page, or you can go up to the file menu right here and open new stack. So here we go. There's our inspector. So the first thing we're going to do is create a title. Go up to the text object right here and click that. And this gives you a little box here. Oops, looks like I hit it twice. That happens. You can st stretch it out. Let's delete this one. And click in here. Now I'm going to do my project on Mark Twain because I discovered that there are a lot of pictures of Mark Twain that are available in Creative Commons which have no copyright attached to them. So, so I'm going to call it Mark Twain and let me show you something with the text box down here. If you highlight your text you can just resize it like this. Of course, you, you may need to make your window a little bigger, which is easy enough to do. And then you can resize your text to whatever you want. See, I don't want to go to a second page, a second line, but we'll stick with that. Position it where we want it. Now let's add a photo. I found some photos of Mark Twain. These are photos with public domain markers on it. That's code for there's no copyright. Here's a picture that we can use of Mark Twain. Now watch this. I'm going to take this picture and I'm going to grab it and drop it into the Hyper Studio stack. Okay, we can close this now, get rid of it. Okay, so it says you have added a picture. Yes, we did. Press OK. Now check this out. Click on the picture double click on it you get the inspector for the images so we go into features and what do we see down here that's it that's the siding of this particular picture so if you're going to be writing a bibliography to go with your project HyperStudio does this for you this only works if you drag and drop a photo from the internet into the HyperStudio stack directly. Still, very powerful. 
Let's create another card. Go up to the top left area. By the browser, there's this plus minus sign. Press the plus sign to create a new card. And here's the new card. And we want to put uh, another picture in here. So I have something set up here. These are some other pictures from the Creative Commons library. Click on this picture the large version of it so it'll look good and we're going to drag it in here just like we did before and close this resize it let's add some text to go with that now of course you want your students to be creative and to put things in their own words but occasionally you need to quote something so I've got something here from Mark Twain's official website. Let's copy this. Now I know you saw me do this with the photos, but it works with words as well. Check it out. I'm going to grab this paragraph and I'm just going to drop it into the Hyper Studio stack. And there it is. And if you click on it, you have added a text object. Yes. Click OK. But if you Go back to the inspector and go to Features. This is the website that we got this from, so when you're citing your quotes, you can use this. Let's go ahead and stretch this out. And you remember how to make the words a little bigger? We double-click on the words, go down to the bottom here, and just go to size and you can resize things the size you want it. Alright, so we're going to close the inspector. What we want to do next is we have two cards, right? But how do we move between them? Glad you asked. Let's start with the first one. We're going to create a button now. Finally, we're going to create a button. Let's start with just the generic button up here at the top. Just click on it, and you get a button right there in Mark Twain's forehead. I'm going to move this over here. And I'm going to double click it and title it. We're going to go Appearance, and give it a name. And I'm just going to call this one Next because we want it to go to the next page. And see how that just changed right away over there. Now, what do we want that button to do? We want, when you push that button, we want it to go to the next page, right? So click on it so it's selected. Double click on it to get this inspector up here. And then we go to Actions. Very important part of Hyper Studio is the action. This is where you can program things in Hyper Studio. You don't have to be a programmer to program Hyper Studio. You just need to know how to use the inspectors and all the tools. So we want to go to another card. I encourage people to you to select another card rather than selecting next card. Because this being a nonlinear project, you you might move you may change the order of where everything is and if you click next card here and then you change the order of some of your your cards then when the person clicks next card it might go to something else because that next card might be different if you choose another card right here then you are locking in that button being linked to that card so here we go it wants to know where we wanted to go to. Now, of course, we don't want to go back to the page we're on. That would be ridiculous. But sometimes there's like 20 pages here. So I'm going to click on page 2, click Continue, and we get to choose a little special effect here for our transition, and click OK. And we can close this. Now, do you remember how to make this button work? Very good. You are listening. You have to go to the browser tool. Now the browser tool can be found in two places. 
It's right here next to the, the edit tool. But it's also, if you have this open, it's in it's here as well. But sometimes people don't like to keep their tools up so they can always grab it right here. So we just click the browser tool. That's like your play button. Now when I click this button, there we go. Moves right along. Now let's add a button to this page. Another place to go to find buttons is the object library or the button library. And don't forget, any object can be turned into a button. Of course, to do that, we need to go up here to the library. And notice I talked about the iPhoto library. That would be graphics. If you go into graphics, it'll give you all the graphics uh, that's built into HyperStudio, but it will also access your iPhoto library. So now we're going to go to audio because we want a sound effect. And there's just a lot of choices here. You can do airplane sounds. Okay, that's not something you want to click on. So, well, how about we beam down like Star Trek? Okay, we'll do that. So, when it's highlighted here, you double click it, and it says you have added a sound. Okay, let's check it out. So we got to go up to the browse mode. Click there. And there's our sound. So if we go to next, it goes back to the first one. Click this one again. And there's our two card stack with sound effects, and buttons. So for next time, do something with these tools. Try to create a stack. Take the one that you created and add to it. Maybe add some more pages, some more pictures to it. So if you're a teacher, play around with the, uh, the, the citing tools, how you can cite things within HyperStudio. If you like Planet HyperStudio, then please like the show. I'd love to hear your comments and suggestions. Comment below or send me an email at joe at iteachapple.org and feel free to share the videos with your friends and colleagues. I hope you learned something and I especially hope you're having fun. Please join us next time on Planet Hyper Studio.